Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dr. Michael Nell and this is Radiology Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you one tip to tell the difference between T1 and T2 weighted MRI brain images. Now a few weeks back I posted these two images on my Instagram stories and asked my followers whether they were T1 or T2 weighted images respectively. And I'm going to give you the chance to do the same. Look at this image on your left, decide whether it's T1 or T2 weighted and do the same for this image on your right. Commit to an answer and I'm going to show you the result of the poll. So here they are, about 300 people replied to this Instagram story and 73% of them said the first image was T1 weighted and about 84 or exactly 84% of them said that the second image was T2 weighted. Well in fact both of these images are T2 weighted images and I did it on purpose because my suspicion is that most people would have looked to the CSF, it's what you're taught in med school. In med school, they don't really go into the depths of the physics in round MRI because it's such a complex topic. So they just give you a general rule for purely T1 or T2 weighted images. They say, look at the CSF. If it's dark, it's T1. And if it's bright, it's T2. Now I want to show you how you can just level up your MRI reading skills with one simple tip. I want you to avert your eyes away from the CSF and actually look at the gray white matter interface. So let's go and have a look at the gray matter. As we know, the gray matter sits on the periphery of the brain. And then we have our white matter, our axons, um, going down within the internal structures of the brain, going down to the spinal cord or crossing the corpus callosum and giving us our white matter tracks. Now, logically, gray is darker than white. So we want to have a look at this. And does that fit that same logic? So we look at our gray matter here on the um, sulcal surfaces of the brain here. We look at these gyri. Our gray matter here is actually lighter than our white matter tracks coming within the brain. So here's the tip. If the gray matter is lighter than the white matter, then it's a T2 weighted image. If it's the wrong way around, if the gray is lighter than the white, it's T2 weighted. If it's normal, if the gray matter is darker than the white matter, as you would logically expect, then that is a T1 weighted image. So it's really that simple. Avert your eyes away from the CSF and just glance at the uh, gray matter, white matter interface. If the gray matter is darker than the white matter, then you know you're dealing with a T1 weighted image. So I'm gonna show you five cases now. I want you to figure out in your mind, it's a T1 or T2 weighted, and I'm gonna give you the answers after each image. So let's go over to our first image. Have a look at this image here. What do you think? Well, here we can see that the gray matter is actually lighter than our white matter. And as we've said before, this is a T2 weighted image. Now, this is what's called a T2 flare image, and it explains why the CSF here is dark. Now, without getting into the physics of MRI sequences, what we've done here is we know how the hydrogen atoms in liquid respond within a magnetic field, and we know the relaxation time of those hydrogen atoms. So we've manipulated our MRI sequence to attenuate any signal coming from fluid. And you might ask, why do we do that? Well, if we have bright CSF on our T2 weighted image, but we've got a lesion that's abutting the CSF that's also bright on T2 weighted image, it's impossible for us to differentiate what's fluid and what's lesion because we don't have any contrast there. So if we attenuate the fluid within that sequence and the lesion stays bright, we know where that lesion is separate to the CSF. And there are many conditions that actually abut the ventricles, and this is a very powerful tool for us to differentiate what is water and what is actually T2 uh, high signal intensity lesion. And when we attenuate the water, we can say with confidence that this is actually T2 weighted lesion rather than some extra fluid sitting outside of that ventricular space. Now let's go on to our second image. Have a look at this image here. And uh, we can see our ventricles are now dark. But if we look closely, it's a bit more difficult to see. Our gray matter up here is actually darker than our white matter tracks coming down. So this is logically the right way around. Gray matter is darker than white matter. We know we're dealing with a T1 weighted image. Now let's go on to our third image. Now we've got an image in the sagittal plane here. And uh, you might be wondering, where do we need to look? It's quite difficult. Some people get confused by the subcutaneous bright fat that you see on T1 weighted image. There you go, I've given you the answer. But we can see that our corpus callosum, which we know here is white matter. The genu of the corpus callosum here, the splenium here, and our body coming across. We can see that that is actually lighter than our gray matter. What we've done is we've cut the gyri um, in sag sagittal section. So on the periphery, we've got gray matter. In the center, we've got white matter as it comes down to go and leave, to go into the internal or external capsules. 
We can see here our gray matter is darker than our white matter. And again, our CSF here, if we look at the fourth ventricle, our CSF is dark. So this is a classic T1 weighted image. We've got two more images to go. Let's have a look at this image. It's getting easy now. We're not looking at the CSF straight away. We look at our gray matter. We see that it's lighter than our white matter. And the fluid here is also bright. So we know that this is a classic T2 weighted image. Now let's go on to our last image. You would have seen that we've lost some resolution here. This is a slightly different sequence. And this is a classic example of why you need to, it help, it's helpful to know whether it's T1 or T2 weighted. So have a look here. It's, uh, it's often easier to look at the, the frontal portions of the, of the um, MRI. And we can see again, gray matter is lighter than our white matter. We know this is a T2 weighted image. In fact, this is what we call the DWI um, image, where we're looking at the diffusion within the tissues of this image. And as we'll see in later lectures, when we go more in depth into reading MRIs, it's really useful to know that this is a T2 weighted image because we get artifacts such as T2 shine through on these images. And we need to know what baseline image we're dealing with in order to go and interpret those more technical images later. But for now, I hope that helps. I hope that you have learned something new today. That simple tip of not looking at the CSF and just looking at the gray white matter in interface it takes you from a regular person who's only learned superficially about MRI, just takes you up that next level. You can confidently say whether an image is T1 or T2 weighted. Um, so I hope that helps. That's all I have for you today. It's really one simple tip. If you have enjoyed this video, I would love for you to leave a comment about what you would like me to do more tutorials on. Maybe like the video and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next lecture. Goodbye, everybody.